Welcome to our lecture online. Now here before us we have what we call the general format of a three-dimensional transformation and a three-dimensional transformation matrix. To reference it, this is what we saw in the previous videos where we had the two-dimensional transformation matrix when we rotated the xy axis to an angle of uh, angle of phi, then that would then be the transformation matrix which is the replacement of this general format of the matrix. And so in the same way we can come up with a three-dimensional transformation matrix that has nine elements. And here we have the x, y, z uh, components of the vector relative in the new coordinate system, the rotated coordinate system, and this is the r, x, the x, y, and z coordinates of the vector in the original coordinate system. We can also write this in a more compact form. So sometimes you'll see this, and when you see that, it's kind of hard to figure out what that actually means. So what I've done here is I've written out what these three terms then would be, r sub x in the prime coordinate system, r sub y in the prime coordinate system, r sub z in the prime coordinate system, which is simply the sum of these, where i goes from 1, 2, 3, or x, y, z, and j goes from 1, 2, 3, or x, y, z. And so this is the same thing written out, which is basically this multiplied out together. So sometimes when you see this in a book, you can say, oh, wow, what does that mean? It literally means this, which is a transformation matrix multiplied times the original vector in the x, y, z coordinate system to give you the x, y, z components in the new coordinate system. Now, since we can rotate in three dimensions in various ways, we're going to show you a few examples of a few transformations from one rotate from one through a rotation to another coordinate system and we'll show you some simple examples so you can get the hang of it but at least become familiar with the notation of what that looks like in three dimensions and that is how it's done. 